me begin by thanking all of you. What an enormous crowd here in Boise. Thank you so much.
to literally make it modern for poor people or people of color or young people or old people to participate in our political process. If elected president, we're going to take those governors on, we're going to take their voter suppression on. And I say to those governors, if you don't have the guts to participate in free and fair elections, get out of politics, get out of to have a vibrant democracy. I want people to be able to run for office no matter what their views are without having to beg wealthy people and corporations for contributions. And I want everybody in this country 18 years of age or older to have the right to vote and of discussion. talk about America and what's going on in our country today, it is not just a corrupt campaign finance system which is undermining American democracy. That is a very important issue, but it's not the only one. Today in America, we also have a rigged economy. What that means is we have more wealth and income inequality than almost any major country on earth, and it is worse today than at any time in America since 1928. Now, you're not going to hear a lot of this on corporate media, on the television, or the newspapers, but here are the facts. Today in America, the top one-tenth of one percent, not one percent, one-tenth of one percent, now owns almost as much wealth as the bottom 90 percent. Got that? Over the last 30 years, there has been a massive transfer of wealth from the middle class to the top one-tenth of one percent. In America today, the wealthiest 20 people own more wealth than the bottom 150 million Americans, half of the American people. But when we talk about a rigged economy, let me give you a very concrete example of what that means. Anybody here know which family is the wealthiest family in America? A smart group of people. Right? So the Walton family owns Walmart. They are the wealthiest family in America. Now it turns out that the Walton family pays wages to their Walmart employees that are so low that many of their workers are forced to go on Medicaid food stamps and subsidized housing. Who pays for the food stamps and the Medicaid? You do. So this is what a rigged economy is about. A rigged economy is about working people paying higher taxes to subsidize the business of the wealthiest family in America. That is nuts. to the Walton family. Get off of welfare, pay your workers a living wage. But it is not only inequality in wealth, it is inequality in income, it is what is happening in our economy every day. Here are the facts. The good news is, thanks to President Obama, Today, our economy is far, far stronger than it was seven and a half years ago. Now, I understand that we have to be very sympathetic 
Many of our Republican friends suffer from a very serious mental health issue called amnesia. <laughs> But they just have a hard time remembering where the economy was when President Bush left office. Now, I don't think it will help too much with them. Uh, I think their amnesia is so strong that nothing that I can say will change their world reality. <coughs> but it is important to note that when President Bush left office in January 2009, we were hemorrhaging 800,000 jobs a month. 800,000 jobs a month. Now, many Republicans say, well, wow, you know, we're only growing the economy by 250,000 jobs a month. Not enough. Well, they're right. I would like to see more. But you know what? Gaining 250,000 jobs a month, hell of a lot better than losing 800,000. <laughs> now, many of my Republican friends are very concerned about the deficit, which is, in fact, a very serious issue, a national debt. Very serious issue. But what they seem to have forgotten is that when George W. Bush left office, we had a $1.4 trillion deficit, the largest in the history of the United States of America. And over the last seven and a half years, we have cut that deficit very significantly. Many of my Republican colleagues were so busy fighting for the deregulation of Wall Street, and in fairness, they were not alone with the Democrats there as well, that they seemed to uh, have forgotten that by the end of Bush's tenure as a result of deregulation, the entire world's financial system was on the verge of collapse. Economists were literally worried that you would put your credit card into an ATM machine and nothing would come out. The world's financial system was on the verge of collapse when Bush left office. Needless to say, today it is much, much stronger. my Republican friends, look, fair is fair. You want to criticize Obama, you want to criticize Bernie Sanders, that's fine. But don't forget how far we have come economically in the last seven and a half years. Fair is fair. <laughs> having said that, let me tell you something else which is true. And that is why we have made progress over the last seven, seven and a half years. The truth is that for 30 or 40 years, before many of you were born, what we have been seeing is a decline in the American middle class. And that is a sad truth that took place on the Republican administrations, it took place on the Democratic administrations. That is a fact. What do I mean by that? What I mean is that everybody here knows that in the last 20 years there has been an explosion of technology. We got robotics, we got all kinds of computers, we have cell phones. All of that means that every worker here is likely far more productive, producing more than a worker who had a similar job 20 or 30 years ago. Now, if you are producing more, you would think that one of two things happens. Either you're making more money or you're working fewer hours. The truth is, unfortunately and tragically, the opposite is what's going on. Millions of Americans today, <clears throat> despite the growth of technology, are working longer hours for lower wages. In my state of Vermont, and I expect here in Idaho, 
You have folks who are working on one job, but two jobs, three jobs, three jobs. Trying to cobble together, three jobs. Trying to cobble together enough income and health care to take care of your families. So what you got, and I see this all over the country, you got mom working hard, you got dad working hard, you got kids working hard, and yet 58%, 58% of all new income generated today is going to the top 1%. That's a rig to cut. You want a radical idea? Here is a radical idea. Together, we are going to create an economy that works for all of us, not just the 1%. What our campaign is about is something very radical, and that is telling the truth to the American people. personal lives, or whether it is politically or socially, the truth is not always pleasant. It's not something that we are happy to hear, but what is also right is you cannot go forward unless we deal with the real issues, with the truth of America. And the truth today is a corrupt campaign finance system. The truth is a rigged economy where most of us work longer hours for lower wages, almost all new income and wealth goes to the top 1%, and here is another unpleasant truth that we have to deal with. That in this great country of ours, we have more people in jail than any other country on earth. We have a broken criminal justice system. Just as an example, China, four times our size, China is a communist authoritarian country that doesn't look very well on dissent. We have more people in jail than China does. And what does that mean? It means for a start that we have to recognize why people end up in jail. One of the reasons is that we have a horrendously high rate of youth unemployment. Nationally, for white kids between 17 and 20 who graduated high school, real unemployment, 33%. For Latino kids, 36%. For African-American kids, 51%. In my view, we should be investing for our young people in education and jobs. Sure, our kids stay in school or have decent jobs, that's the investment, not jails and incarceration. In terms of criminal justice, national, we have got to take a look at a lot of local police departments. We are tired of seeing unarmed people, often African Americans, shot by the police. We need a medical person here. All right, take a break for a second. We have a medical. Okay. Let's take a break for a second. box 
and not accepting the status quo as something that has to exist. In other words, we as a nation, this is the wealthiest nation in the history of the world, we should not be having more people in jail. 2.2 million people. We are spending $80 billion a year locking people up. You know what? It is a better investment to send a kid to the University of Idaho than to jail. that if we use that money for education, for jobs, and for other areas that we can't cut that prison population down significantly. Of course. I am a former mayor, Burlington, Vermont. I'd love you all to come up and visit us in Vermont. We are a very rural state, not quite as rural as I know. We're very rural, you'll enjoy it when you visit us. But I was a mayor of the largest city, Burlington, for eight years. I've worked with police officers all my life. Vast, overwhelming majority of police officers are honest, they are hardworking. Being a police officer today is not an easy job. But, when any police officer, like any public official, breaks the law, that officer must be held accountable. We need to demilitarize local police. look like the diversity of the communities they serve. Now let me throw out a controversial idea. Some of you may agree with me, some of you may not. But I think it is time to rethink the so-called war on drugs. system of government, 
It is the decision of states whether or not to legalize marijuana for states have. But it should not be a federal crime. In my state of Vermont and neighboring New Hampshire and many parts of this country, we have a very serious crisis with opiate addiction, with heroin addiction. Every day, people are dying of heroin overdoses. In my view, when we look at drug abuse and when we look at addiction, we have got to look at it as a health issue, not a criminal. is doing as well as it is. We have now won nine states. And if all of you come out to caucus tomorrow, we're gonna win you in our life. well is we are listening to the American people and not wealthy campaign contributors. One of the important differences between Secretary Clinton and myself is how we raise money for the campaign. It takes a lot of money, sadly, to run a national campaign. We're talking about hundreds of millions of dollars, even more than that. Now, when we began this campaign, we had to make a very important decision, and that is, do we have a super PAC or not? No! We agree with you. the end of about a tenth of a second, that we do not represent Wall Street, corporate America, or the billionaire class. We don't want their money. We don't need their money. And what we did was to reach out to the middle class and working families and say, if you want to support a campaign, which is going to stand up to big money and which is going to transform our society, help us out. And you know what happened? In the last 10 months, we have received well over 5 million individual campaigns. Anybody know what the average campaign contribution is? $27. And what this is, this is revolutionary for contemporary American politics because what it is showing is we can run a winning national campaign without being dependent on big money interests. Abraham Lincoln at Gettysburg. This is a campaign of the people, by the people, and for the people. Secretary Clinton has chosen another route to raise money. Super PAC, but our largest Super PAC recently reported that it raised $25 million from special interests, including $15 million from Wall Street. <laughs> Secretary Clinton has, as many of you know, given speeches 
behind closed doors on Wall Street for $225,000 a speech. What I have said is if you're going to get paid $225,000 for one speech, it must be an extraordinarily brilliant speech. It must be a speech which could turn around modern civilization. It must be a speech written in Shakespearean prose. The secretary should share it with the whole world. But the real issue here is whether anybody can be a serious agent for change. If you're taking a whole lot of money from Wall Street, the fossil fuel industry, the drug industry, and everybody else. Now this campaign has been listening to working people all across this country. No workers are telling me they can't make it on eight or nine bucks an hour. Seven fifty. Seven twenty-five. Raise your hand if you're making less than eight bucks an hour, you. Holy moly. Waitress? Then you got waitresses and waiters who make even less. Look. All right, well, it's welcome to America. We got millions of people. Here is the point. Media doesn't cover it, but it's time we did cover it. We have massive levels of income and wealth in equality, and yet millions of people are trying to make it in seven and a quarter. Waitresses are even less than that. Eight bucks an hour, nine bucks an hour. Here's the truth. You can't make it on seven or eight bucks an hour. I just met yesterday a woman, she said, Bernie, I am working 60 hours a week. I have a little daughter. I don't have time to spend with my daughter. This is a story being told all over America. And what that tells me is that we have got to raise the minimum wage to a living wage, $15 an hour. In America, if you're working 40 or 50 hours a week, you should not be living in poverty. And here is a similar issue, another issue. Our campaign is listening to senior citizens and disabled veterans. And all of us know how much we owe for the men and women who put their lives on the line for the veterans. Not only should we be thanking our vets in words, we should be thanking them in deeds. And yet we have disabled vets and seniors in Vermont and in Idaho who are trying to make it on eleven, twelve thousand dollars a year. You know what? You can make it on eleven, twelve thousand dollars a year. Now, I got Republican colleagues all over the Senate, all over the House. They want to lower and cut Social Security benefits. Well, I've got news for them. We are not going to cut Social Security. We're going to expand Social Security. This campaign has been listening to women. And here's what women have been telling me. For a start, they say, Bernie, how does it happen that when I go to work, I am making 79 cents on the dollar compared to men? And the answer is that has nothing to do with economics. That is just old-fashioned sexism. And we have an
This campaign has been listening to young people. And you know, I don't want to be hackneyed in saying this, but the young people obviously are the future of this country. And I have been very proud in state after state winning the vast majority of young people's votes. That young people, by young people I mean 45 or younger. I know if you're very young, you don't think 45 is young. But when you get older, you think 45 is just your kid. But all over this country, state after state, we're winning people 45 or younger, which tells me how a progressive agenda is the future of America. They're saying, number one, given the fact that we're the wealthiest country in the history of the world, that we have so much technology and productivity, why is it happening that for the first time in the modern history of America, our generation, the young generation, may have a lower standard of living than their parents? Yeah. What we are experiencing today is the American dream in reverse. My parents didn't have any money, grew up with very little money. But their dream was that their sons would do better than they, and that has in fact happened. That is what the American dream is about, and we're not going to see that dream reversed. young people are also telling me is they say, look, everybody has told us how important education is. Everybody has told us, get the best education you can. Everybody has told us that we're living in a competitive global economy and we need a well-educated workforce to succeed. And then the young people say, if all of that is true, why are we leaving college thirty, fifty thousand dollars in debt? Anybody here with student debt? Our, our just what this campaign is about is thinking outside of the status quo, outside of the box. I want you all just to see, which the media will not report, the reality of what we're talking about right here in Boise, Idaho. I asked people how many of them make it less than 10 bucks an hour. A lot of hands went up. I asked people here how many of them have student debt. A lot of hands went up. The question is, if we think that education is so important, why is it that we are punishing millions of people because they did the right thing and they got an education? I talked to a kid in Iowa. He dropped out of college, two years into college, 60,000 bucks in debt. Talked to a doctor in Burlington, Vermont, went to medical school, 300,000 in debt. Somebody who graduated dental school, young woman, $400,000 in debt. Talked to a guy in Nevada, took out his student loan 25 years ago. He is more in debt today than he was when he took it out. A few days ago, $160,000 and then he's going to lose his home and he has four kids. All right, here is the point. If you take a deep breath and you think outside of the status quo, ask yourself, if we think education is important, if we are going to be a competitive global economy, 
We need to reward people for getting an education, not punishing them. And think about this. Think about this. hundred years ago, very courageous and foresighted people, they said every child in America, regardless of his or her income, should be able to get a free public education. Now think about it. A hundred years ago, what they were saying is it's not fair for rich families to have their kids go to school while working class kids were working on the farm or in factories. And they said all kids have got to get a public education. That was extraordinary. Today, in 2016, think about it. The world has changed. The economy has changed. Technology has changed. People need more education than they got 50 years ago if they're going to succeed in the economy. When we talk about public education today, it is not good enough to talk about first grade through 12th grade. We have got to make public colleges and universities tuition free. Is this a radical idea? No. It really isn't. The world has changed. And we have got to change with that world. If you need more education, Germany does it, Scandinavia does it, countries all over the world do it, we can do it too. Now people say, and this often is a criticism levied at me, Bernie, you think too big, you're too radical. Where are you gonna get, where are you gonna get the money for this? Now I want you to think about this. Eight years ago, as a result of the greed, the recklessness, and the illegal behavior on Wall Street, our economy suffered the worst economic downturn since the Great Depression, right? Somebody just mentions they lost their house. Millions of people lost their homes, their jobs, and their life savings. And what did Congress do? No, they did something, they did something, they bailed them out. Now, some for the establishment types, it was perfectly natural. Why would you not bail out the crooks on Wall Street who destroyed the economy? Hey, that's what you're supposed to do. Well, this is what I think. I think that right now, we should impose a tax on Wall Street speculation. enough money to, number one, make public colleges and universities tuition-free, number two, substantially lower student debt in this country. <laughs> if Congress can bail out Wall Street, it is Wall Street's time to help the middle class in this country. This is not the kind of thinking the establishment wants you to do. But again, this is common sense, it is not radical. We have money to bail out Wall Street, we have money to make sure the kids do not graduate college deeply in debt. Not a lot of money. This campaign is listening to the Latino community. undocumented people in this country. They are tired of living in the shadows, tired of living in fear, tired of being exploited. They want comprehensive immigration reform and a path to the This campaign is listening to our brothers and sisters in the African-American community. They are asking, pretty 
simple question, how does it happen that communities like Flint, Michigan, are in the condition that they are in? I was in Flint, Michigan a few weeks ago. What I saw and what I heard was literally hard for me to believe was happening in America in 2016. Children there are being poisoned by excessive lead in the water. And all over this country, we have minority communities where the schools are falling apart, where employment is sky high, housing and health care are inadequate. And what our brothers in the African American community are asking is, how can we spend trillions of dollars fighting a war in Iraq that we never should have fought, but we don't have the money to? By the way, by the way, if anyone thinks Flint, Michigan is the only city in America with a water problem, you are surely mistaken. We're looking at hundreds of communities in America with inadequate water, inadequate wastewater plants, in fact, our entire infrastructure in many parts of this country, roads, bridges, levees, dams, airports, our rail system, is in massive disrepair. We can create 13 million jobs by rebuilding our crumbling infrastructure. That's what This campaign is listening to the Native American community. I do not have to tell anybody here who has read five minutes of American history for you all to know how horribly and dishonestly our country, our government, from way back before we were a country, has related to the Native American community. They have been lied to, they have been cheated, treaties that were negotiated have been broken, and yet we owe so much to the first Americans. in ways that are unimaginable. They have taught us more than any other people respect for the environment and the understanding. And the understanding that we as a people have got to live as part of nature, not destroy nature. I am a very proud member of the Senate Committee on the Environment. And I have talked, I have talked to scientists all over our country and all over the world. And what the scientists tell us virtually unanimously, climate change is real. Climate change is caused by human activity. Climate change is already doing devastating harm in our country and around the world. And this is what they also tell us. And that is if we do not get our act together and transform our energy system by the end of this century, this planet will be between 5 and 10 degrees warmer. And what that means, more drought, more flood, more extreme weather disturbances, more acidification of the ocean, more rising sea levels, more international conflict as peoples fight over limited natural resources. That is the future if we do not have the guts to take on the fossil fuel industry.
that their short-term profits are not more important than the future of this planet. I talked to you earlier about a corrupt campaign finance system. How does it happen that not one Republican candidate for president has stood before, and there were many of them at the start of the campaign, <laughs> how come not one of them has come forward and said, well, you know, I've talked to scientists, I've read the literature, we got a major crisis. The answer gets back to a corrupt campaign finance system. If any one of them were to tell you the truth about climate change, that candidate would lose his funding from the fossil fuel industry. And that is the power of money in politics. And that is why we've got to end this corrupt campaign finance system. is transforming our energy system away from fossil fuel to energy efficiency and sustainable energies like wind, solar, geothermal. Question, here's a question. Let's see if anybody knows the answer. How many major countries on Earth do not guarantee health care to all of their people? I've got a smart guy right up here. Answer is one, and you are living in that country. Somehow or another, the United Kingdom, France, Germany, Holland, Scandinavia, Canada, every major country on earth guarantees health care to all of their people. Now, I'm a member of the committee that helped write the Affordable Care Act. It has done a lot of good. of pre-existing conditions. We have added 17 more million people to the ranks of the insured, and we've done away with discrimination against women in health care. But today, we still have 29 million Americans uninsured. Any uninsured Americans here? We have millions of people who are underinsured with large deductibles and copayments. Any of those here? Now what that means is if you don't have much money and you have a large deductible and you get sick, what happens? You don't go to the doctor or you gotta pay it out of funds that you really don't have. And then on top of all of that, we have as a nation we are being ripped off every day by the greed of the drug companies. They charge us the highest prices in the world for prescription drugs. One out of five Americans cannot afford to fill the prescriptions their doctors write. And yet, last year, the three major drug companies made $45 billion in profits. Now, I have been criticized for saying this, so I will say it again as clearly as I can. In my view, health care is a right of all people Republicans going all over this country talking about family values, how much they love families. What they mean by family values, and I want everybody to be crystal clear about this, what they mean is that 
No woman in this room, in this state, in this country should have the right to control her own body. I disagree. What they mean by family values is that our gay brothers and sisters should not have the right to get married. I disagree. Now, I shock nobody here by telling you there is a lot of hypocrisy in politics, right? You're all shocked to hear that, I know. But here is hypocrisy, hypocrisy at the highest level. My Republican colleagues, they hate government. They, tell, they want to cut Social Security, want to cut Medicare, want to cut Medicaid. I guess in this state, the governor has not expanded Medicaid through the ACA. <laughs> Tens of thousands of people in the state who could have health insurance do not have health insurance. They hate government. They want to get government off of your backs. Except when it comes to a woman having to make a very personal choice. Now, I don't understand how you can talk about getting government off of our backs when you want government at the local, state, and federal level to tell every woman in America what she has to do. That's hypocrisy. Everybody here knows that real change in this country has never taken place from the top on down. It has always taken place from the bottom on down. It has taken place when millions of workers stood up and said, we're not animals, we want dignity and decent wages on the job, we're gonna form a union. It has taken place when millions of African Americans and their white allies rallied together forever. Some died, some were beaten, some went to jail to say that in America we will not tolerate racism and bigotry. historical perspective. Women in America did not have the right to vote, could not get the education they wanted, could not do the jobs they wanted a hundred years ago. But what happened is women and their male allies said, you know what? In America, women will not be second-class citizens. against sexism. Now, if we were here, I want you to think about this, because this is how change takes place. If we were in this arena, 10 years ago, which is no historical time at all, and somebody jumps up and says, you know, Bernie, I think that maybe by the year 2015, gay marriage will be legal in 50 states in this country. The person, the person next to them would have said, you're nuts. What are you smoking? <laughs> but that is what happened, and it happened because the gay community and their straight allies took on incredible bigotry and hatred. And what 
they said is that in America, people should have the right to love whoever they want, regardless of their gender. Six or seven years ago, no time at all, somebody jumps up and says, you know, Bernie, the $7.25 an hour minimum wage is a starvation wage, it's really awful, we've got to raise the minimum wage to 15 bucks an hour. What somebody next to them would have said, 15 bucks an hour, you're talking about doubling the minimum wage, you can't do that, that's crazy. But you know what happened? People in the fast food industry, People working at McDonald's and at Burger King and Wendy's, they went out on strike. They went to the communities. And then you know what happened? Seattle, Washington, 15 bucks an hour. San Francisco, Los Angeles, Oregon, New York, 15 bucks an hour. status quo is something that has to go on forever. We can make change. If we have a vision of where we want this country to go, if we do not allow the Donald Trumps and the others to divide us up, and white, and Latino, and Asian American, and Native American, is gay, and straight, is men, and women. When we stand together, there is nothing we cannot Santa's nice guy, he combs his hair really well. <laughs> but he cannot win a general election. So let me just tell you that in the last major poll, national poll that I saw at NBC, Wall Street Journal, we were 18 points ahead of Donald Trump. Yeah. 
State after state, not only are we beating Trump badly in state polls, we're doing much better against Trump than is Hillary Clinton. Really sudden, and my polls are polls, they always take with a grain of salt. But just the other day, yesterday, I think, in the state of Utah, one of the more conservative states in America, Bernie Sanders was beating Donald Trump by 11 points in Utah. Hillary Clinton was ahead by two points, we were ahead by 11 points. Now, the American people, and this is what I think the folks in Utah are very conservative, they didn't hear in Iowa, I don't believe. And that is, we are not going to elect a president who insults people every single day. You don't know me that well, but I don't go out of my way to make vicious personal attacks against my opponents. I just don't do that. But, but when you talk about somebody like Donald Trump, what you have to recognize is much of what he says is simply not true. He lies a lot. And this is not just what he says. I'm not just saying this. PolitiFact is an organization that tries to check up on the veracity of what politicians say. This is what they said. They looked at 112 statements made by Donald Trump. They rated 78% of these statements false, mostly false, or pants on fire false. I have many conservative friends who disagree. But to be conservative doesn't mean to say you're dishonest, you believe what you believe. Donald Trump is a pathological liar. And you <laughs> the American people will not elect Donald Trump president because he insults Mexicans, he insults Muslims, he insults women, he insults veterans, he insults the African American community. And I want you all to remember this, because this is important. Before he was running for president, Trump was leader of the so-called Bertha movement. And that was a very dangerous, awful movement which was trying to delegitimize the presidency of Barack Obama. You know, it is one thing people want to disagree with Obama, that's fine. But don't tell us that he was not born in the United States and delegitimize his presidency. Interesting that my dad was born in Poland, the president's father was born in Kenya. Nobody has asked me for my birth certificate. Maybe it has something to do with the color of my skin. I don't know. Tomorrow. There is going to be an enormously important caucus here in Idaho. <laughs> Caucuses begin at 5 p.m. Pacific Time, 6 p.m. Mountain Time. And here is the story. First of all, I think it would be just extraordinary for this country if what is perceived to be a conservative state like Idaho stood up and said, we are part of the political revolution. Now, my own state of Vermont 
is not a conservative state. I got 86% of the vote in our country. But if we could win here in Idaho, it would send a message throughout this country that even in conservative states, people are prepared to stand up, take on the billionaire class. is we win when the voter turnout is high, we lose when the voter turnout is low. Please come out tomorrow night. Let's have a record-breaking turnout in Idaho.